Good evening. That didn't work out, did it? No need to tell you that. If you're a Sheffield Wednesday supporter, we were hoping this programme was going to be a bit of a celebration. It was always going to be an Owls show rather than a bit of an inquest. But in sport and in football, there are winners and there are losers. It's part of life. So although these guys are both down in the dumps, uh, I'm sure they'll get over it pretty quickly, as I'm sure as well that the players and the manager and the chairman of Sheffield Wednesday will do, because there's no other option, is there? The supporters will take longer, I think. Rob O'Neill, you've met him before on this show. We were hoping, by the way, that this was going to be the year of the first <laughs> double promotion uh, in Sheffield's football history since 1984. That's not worked out as a result of last night's events at Hillsborough, which you commentated on yeah. for the Wednesday online service, Rob O'Neill, and of course, no introduction, John Newsom, former Sheffield Wednesday player and captain, never shy of an opinion on Twitter and elsewhere <laughs> in your Sheffield Star column. So really, gut reaction. I mean, first of all, you, Rob, I mean, you, you endured all the emotion of it. Uh, I, I was there merely observing and I was kicking every ball, I have to say, yeah. for Wednesday, just as I've kicked every ball when I've seen Sheffield United this season. You cannot help it, you do it. How do, you, how do you feel now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a bit raw at the moment. It, it probably feels, I don't know, worse than, than last year when we lost the whole city. You get to the final and I guess you think that's going to hurt even more. But I don't know, maybe it's because he's, he's on the bounce. He's so close but so far away. And, you know, obviously penalties is a lottery. You, you know, it can go either way. Yeah. But, yeah. And you were there with John Pearson. Uh, there was one highlight and we'll... Yeah. Uh, let's save that because yeah. there was one really huge moment uh, and the crowd, as ever, were brilliant. The, fan, the fans back in. John, John Newsom, your feeling and, and, and reaction. Um, did you have to have a, one extra drink last night? Drown the sorrows? No, 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 no. Um, disappointed, like everybody else, Alan. You know, it's um, like like every supporter and, and every player and anybody who's associated with the football club. You you, you want them to be in the Premier League, and, and it's the place to be, isn't it? And, and every year as it goes on. It becomes more apparent that 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 is the the place to be, and you know we got close last year, and I, I fancied us, I fancied our chances this year. I thought we got into it with a bit of form. Um, I looked at the other three teams and thought we, I think we can beat these, you know, mm -hmm. um, and and it didn't work out. It just no. didn't work out, did it? So. No, it didn't work out. Here's how it didn't work out. Just a brief snapshot of, of, of proceedings. There we are, there's the celebration, the goal huddle after Stephen Fletcher's opener, at which point Wednesday, as Carlos Carvalho said, appeared to be in full control of the game. I thought, there's the light show, a repeat of what happened against Brighton uh, a year ago, but sadly with this very dejected uh, conclusion to the game, Wednesday players trooping off, many of them do staying to salute the crowd, and the scenes at the other end for the jubilant Huddersfield town uh, players and the manager David Wagner on there and let's give full credit to them what a season what a manager he's appointment he's proved to be and I, I've got to say I thought over the two games they fully deserved it do you, do you agree with that chaps yeah I think they were the better team you know I yeah. think that that's hard hard to to admit sometimes isn't it because you know you, you we sometimes have rosy coloured glasses on don't we when watching our own team but you know to take a step back and look at it in perspective and and you know with football's eyes you know, I think they were the better team. They were, they were the better team up at Huddersfield on Sunday, and I thought they came and they, they commanded the game yesterday. And um, yeah, I thought they did. I thought they yeah. played a very, very astute game mm. of football, and, and they kept possession. And, and the, the hitters, especially in the second half, the hitters with pace and power, um, and it was difficult for us. And, and, mm. and I thought. Yeah, they were, they, they were probably the better team over the two legs. With my less trained eye, and having never played football to anything like the level that you, <laughs> that you did, um, I did think that having gone ahead through Stephen Fletcher, there didn't seem to be a sense that, that they were going to sit back and just grind it out. They were still causing problems looking for, for, for a second goal. I couldn't see a problem until that substitution came of uh, Colin Quayner came on the bench and almost instantly, you know, he got beat the offside mm. trap, got behind and created mm. the goal, didn't he? He was causing right. problems as soon as he came on. Immediate. I think, I spoke to one or two Huddersfield fans about him and I think he's one of those players that is a bit hit and miss and that was certainly yeah. his best performance in a Huddersfield Town shirt and he was causing his problems every yeah. time he got the ball. He reminded me a bit in a way of Antonio, you know, like the ball used to stick to his feet and somehow he'd get through yeah. and he did that a few times and he definitely changed 
you know, the complexion for, for them, I thought, because at that stage, you're looking at the substitutes, they hadn't made any changes till very late till that first no. uh, roll of the dice, and you're thinking, well, maybe they don't believe in the bench, maybe they thought that was the team that's going to get them a result, and as soon as he came on, he has an almost instant impact. I mean, for his size, he's, he's got pace and skill, and pace is something that Huddersfield certainly had the edge on, um, yeah, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah, and, and, he, and it's a... Uh, Several players. It's, I mean, Van Lepara, Wells, Kachunga, yeah, people like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a useful asset, isn't it? You know, it's mm. an asset that, especially as a defender, it's it's one of the most difficult things to defend against because if somebody's got raw pace and and they use it, I think that's the thing. If you you see many players who've got lots of pace, but they don't want they don't want to necessarily use it to their advantage. Mm. They want to beat you with a trick and that kind of thing. And you know, sometimes when they just stick it in the grass behind you and say, "Come on, we'll have yeah. a race." Difficult to defend against. Yeah. Well, let's let's put it into perspective because sport is winners and losers. There are fractions between winning and losing often, and yet the reaction, whether to a loss or a, or a victory, is you know a million miles apart. As I tweeted today, you know it's a fraction that's decided it, and the criticism goes way way over the top, and probably sometimes the praise does as well. I mean, do you do you think that, Rob? I yeah, certainly do. I think the problem is that you kind of build up expectations yeah. because. You know, let's be right, Wednesday have had no success really, apart from you know, a few promotions from League One into the Championship, which in some ways for a club of our size, we don't kind of see that as a, an achievement. And whilst it is in the moment, realistically, we want to get back to the Premier League. I remember watching you know, John playing in the top flight, you know, David Hurst, you know, that, that was the team that I first sort of, you know, saw. And you know, I thought it was always going to be like this, you know, yeah. Sheridan and Waddles and what have you. And we have fallen a long way, and I think we're all just desperate to get back to that top flight. But yeah. You know, there's other teams. Leeds have just missed out. They've been ambitious this year. You know, obviously Norwich. You know, at the end they they were really strong, weren't they? And maybe with a few more weeks, that they're a team that next season will be up. there. Villa will put a team together. So there's going to be competition next season as well. So it's going to be a challenge yeah. to get out of that league. And, and bearing in mind the teams that uh, Sheffield Wednesday have left below them, uh, likes of Leeds United, mm -hmm. likes of Derby County, likes of Aston Villa. Over two years, surely Carlos Cavalli has done a very good job, and he's fully entitled to say that as well. You know, finishes of sixth and fourth, playoffs both times. So that is perspective as well. What absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think you know, you've taken a step backwards, and we've come a we've come a hell of a long way, haven't we? You know, mm. from from you know five six years ago to where we are now, and and sometimes you've got to put it in perspective. But um, I think when you just get that close. To the promised land, you, you you know you want a piece of it, don't you? And yeah. uh, you know it's disappointing that we're not there, but but yeah, he's done he's done a good job, um, and they've played some some good football. I don't I don't think they've they've necessarily been as consistent this year uh, in the in the type of football and the the flamboyant way that they played mm. last year. But I think what they've done this year is they've learned to win games ugly, you know, mm. if that for want of a better better uh, description really and, and they have won, won games when, when it's not been great and at the end of the day that's what it's about isn't it winning football matches indeed well he's won certainly a lot more than it, that he's lost Carlos's future is being debated quite openly now it was kind of on the radar and then went under the radar because of the importance of last night's game and now it's kind of open season on it so I'll get your views on that and also the, the Jordan uh, Rhodes non-penalty taking controversy your view I know you've got very strong views on that I know you've gone to war on Twitter today on the, on that on that basis I might just play devil's advocate for, with, with you on that see where you go first of all um, gut reactions um, Rob Carlos do you see him staying or going I don't know I, and what do you think should happen I'm not sure what will happen I mean I, I did find it a bit puzzling when it came out the other week in fact you had a conversation with you and, and Carlos yeah. revealed that you know his contract was going to be maybe up for renewal and obviously we're all under the kind of assumption that he'd sign a new contract a year ago so, I was certainly. so that that has kind of put a cat amongst the pigeons a bit and that's why the speculation's there because you know I saw some of the fans sort of moaning at one or two of the journalists were running stories about it but it was kind of thrown out there so I can understand yeah. from the, the the journalistic point of view why that's happening and you know, it does need to be sorted quickly. Um, but I think the only people who know it are, are the chairman and the manager, and they're planning to have a meeting 
and to see which direction they both want to go in. So yeah, it kicks I off. It I actually, actually think it depends how that meeting goes. I think it could go either way. Indeed, I mean, it actually kicked off with a national newspaper story written by a very respected journalist, but not based in this area, yeah. suggesting that Carlos was going to get sacked mm. at the end of the season, which was not only harsh, but from all I hear. You know, we all have different sources, but from what I hear from very, very good sources at Sheffield Wednesday, and other journalists have heard the same, that has not never been the case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely never been the case. An excellent relationship between Tapon Chansiri and Carlos Cavallo, and it was never on the agenda. That uh, comes to across. Sack him. Never. I think it comes across. I think it's, I, it's clear they, they get on very well, and yeah. I think it will be Carlos mm -hmm. who will have a you know, an adult conversation. And, and if he decides, maybe he might be the one to think, you know, I've had two years at this because he hasn't typically stayed in the same place for a long time. So maybe he's thinking, maybe I need a new challenge. Maybe it's going to be good for the team because he's got to try and lift those lads again for a, for a third season after two disappointments. Yeah. So that's going to be a challenge in itself. Yeah, I wonder whether he'll feel that he won't have the same tolerance and rapport with supporters on what would be, you know, a must-win promotion season, whereas another yeah. manager wouldn't be under that same amount yeah, of possibly. How do you think, see it, John? I think possibly, but I think he's, he's probably a victim of his own honesty, isn't he? You know, yeah. and, and, and it's not, not often that we say that in football, is it? That, you know, people come out and, and they are totally honest, and, and he has been, um, and he's been a victim of that a little bit, you know, with the furore around it. Um, will he stay... Who, who, who knows? You know, I, I, I hear the same things as yourself, Alan. That you know, he's got a fabulous relationship with the chairman. Um, they're going to have a conversation next week, aren't they? You know, yeah. he's, that, that's what he said. They'll have a conversation next week. They'll sit down. They'll work out between themselves what's the way forward. And you've got to respect that. You've got to respect mm -hmm. what they've told us and, and what they will do, and and go from there. And you know, like I say, yeah. just just his honesty is is probably got him into hot water a little bit. Well, yeah, I think he put it out there because there's two sides to a coin. It's kind yeah. of being suggested that he's going to get the sack, which we all know is is, is rubbish. Yeah. That's never going to happen. So I think maybe he highlighted, hey, there's two sides to this. Yeah. They're talking about me getting the sack. Yeah. What about me and the way I feel? And being a, a marketable manager who's going to, who's going to have offers yeah. of... of of, mm -hmm. of other employment. So mm -hmm. I don't think in his heart he wants to go. You know what I think is important is that whatever he's going to do or whatever the club's going to do, it needs to be done quickly. I don't yeah. want to go for a long summer and then we decide to, to make a change. You know, you look at Sunderland last year in the, in the top flight and you know, Lois yeah. comes in late on and then he's got to scramble around to bring in yeah. some players. And, you know, that didn't work out. And I, I don't want Wednesday to be in that same position. We need to build on these last two seasons and we need to make yeah. decisions on a few players. and and try and, you know, just bring it, I don't know, freshen things up, because I think they'll need to do that. That's not a criticism of the players that are there, necessarily. But I think maybe you need to shake it up now after two disappointments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll talk about what, what might be needed and what might be lacking on the, on the field uh, in, in, in part two. And I agree with you, uh, Rob, you know, you're saying that it really is Carlos's call, more so than a chairman who... But if the chairman suspects that he's going to have to replace his manager, he'd be a fool not to be putting uh, feelers out, really, wouldn't he? Absolutely. I, he's got, he's got, he's got like, like Rob says, he's yeah. got to, they've got to strike fast, they've got to work fast, you know. Yeah. You know, this, this, this break, this, this mid-season, you know, end-of-season break, it goes in a flash, it really does. And, you know, so whoever's coming in, if, it's not, if he doesn't stay, you've got to organise pre-season, you've got to get your, your players in, you know, you want to do your business early, don't you, really? Yeah. Because otherwise, at the end of the... End of the window, prices start rising. Who's coming in for you? Oh, Sheffield Wednesday, they've got a few quid. Yeah. Oh, we'll stick another 500 grand on that. And, and it's what happens. Yeah. You know? I'm pretty sure it won't be Alan Pardew. Famous last words. It wouldn't be uh, popular appointments. And I also think, I don't know whether you do, that when an announcement's made and taking Rob's point, it doesn't need to be sooner rather than later. It'll be a mutual decision, I'm sure, and a shake hands if he's to go. Absolutely, yeah. What would you prefer? I, I mean, I make no bones. I think they've got a very good manager. I wouldn't be throwing all the pieces in the air. I'd be hoping, hoping he stays. Uh, what do you think, you two? What's I think, I think the, the other question is, that who, who are you going to get that's better than him? That, that's that's yeah. the hardest one. Everyone will say, well, you need to make a change. You know, the fans that have been anti-Carlos in the last sort of month or so. But the, the, none of them can make a suggestion on anyone who's better. You know, no. as you say, you get a bit greedy, don't you, when you've had a little bit of success. You think, well, let's go and push the boat out. But... You know, attracting a top-name manager, you know, you're going to have to pay compensation because you'd assume that they're already in work. Yeah. Uh, and I can't think of too many names. I mean, have you got anyone that you could throw out the No, absolutely. Or? I mean, 
it's the same, like like you say, it's, it's better the devil you know, isn't it? It's, um, you know, he's, he's, had, he's had two good seasons. Is he the right man to take us forward? I don't know if he is. I don't know if he is, but I don't know who is, you know? You know, thankfully it's not my decision to make, is it? So, mm. um, but whoever comes in, uh, if it's not Carlos, has, has got a massive task on the hands, massive mm. task, because that, that league next year, is is more difficult than it than it was this year. It's got mm. to be. They should have most of the, the players for the job. Should have. We'll talk about it in part two. Penalties. Okay. So the big story, the big follow up story, undoubtedly has been a player. Not not the players who had penalties saved. There were two of them for Sheffield Wednesday in losing that penalty shootout. The big story has been about one player, Jordan Rhodes, who didn't take a penalty. What was your feeling at the time, Rob? You I was surprised he didn't take one because I mean we went through the names, you know, before they were taken, and you're thinking. Jordan Road, you're thinking Atty knew you because they've yeah. taken them in the past for teams uh, you know, for Sheffield Wednesday and scored in Natty's case anyway. And I was a bit surprised. Um, I was equally surprised that, that Sam took the first one because I was looking at him and thinking that he was actually, you know, he'd run his race at yeah, the end yeah. of the 120 minutes because remember he's been out injured. So I was a bit surprised he took the first mm -hmm. one. But like John says, it, it's all about whether you, you feel able to take it because it's a different situation I mean everyone can take a penalty in a training session and probably put them all in the top yeah. corner or whatever but when you've got all the crowd and the expectation there it becomes a different ball game so Carlos Cavallo has asked the direct question why didn't he take it it you know he hasn't got much option but to say well he didn't fancy it so mm. it's not a case of dobbing your player in I don't think because no, had he said well I decided the the players would take it he would have had massive flack for that yeah, and, 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 and he's also thing? been untruthful, hasn't he? Yeah. You know, he's, 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 so an, he's an honest guy, isn't he? That's, yeah. that's what comes across about Carlos. He, he's a very, very honest guy, and, 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 and that's what I like yeah. about him. But, but, yeah, I mean, there's been lot, lots of um, noise and, and stuff on Twitter and on social media today and people going on about it. And it's just it's, it's how you are in the moment. You know, I, you know I've been involved in, in penalty shootouts and... Um, and it is how you feel at that moment. And if you usually they, they have they'll have maybe six or seven names in a pool who fancies a penalty. You'll go through them in training. You'll do it in, in you know before the game that kind of thing. Who fancies one? Then you have to work out are they still on the pitch? Are they not on the pitch? You know you're all tired, right? Out of you six seven, you know who, who fancies it? And, and in what order do you do you want to take them? Because taking the first one and the second one in my opinion, is easier than taking the fourth one or the fifth one. Because on the fourth one or the fifth one, it's usually what it, it's Sometimes. hanging in the balance, yeah. you know? And, and if you miss, you're out. If you score, you might be in, you might win. You know, if you take the first one, there's, well, still, there's still another four to go after you or the second one, you know what I mean? So Let's take the argument, uh, OK, that, you know, that, that Jordan Rhodes... The, 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 what he costs and what he earns is largely irrelevant. He's a he's a goal scorer, okay. Yeah, and he, he's yeah. taken plenty of penalties in his time, albeit he missed the last one mm -hmm. at, at Leeds. I, I, I try to put myself in his place, and I came to the conclusion: I'd rather take a penalty and miss it than be called a bottler, which effectively is what he's been called today. But in thinking that, am I being selfish? That I'd rather take a penalty and miss team. than. Yeah, you, you might, you might have got selfish. well. You might have got six lads there who are confident. I'm going to score. Yeah, yeah. I, w I want to take a penalty. You, you, for, for all you know, you might have got eight lads who yeah. say, I, "I want a penalty gaffer," and uh, well, we, there's only five. No, but I want. I want to take one. I want to take one. You know, I'm going to score one. You know, because yeah. you do have people like that with that character. Yeah. But you also have people who maybe at that time or at that at that moment in time or the way that their character is, who say, you know what. I don't, if I, I don't know if I fancy one tonight. So, so you've been defending Jordan Rhodes today I just against think it, a yeah. lot of flack. Yeah, yeah. I just think I, he's, you know, at the time he was, he was asked, he maybe asked the question, and and I, what I said was, you know, he 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 he, he wasn't confident enough. Mm. Well, when people was, you know, asking why, why, why has he not got confidence? Well, he's not played, he's not scored. You know, players do like confidence, even when you play in matches. If things aren't going right can, or things aren't. 
you know, your confidence it, does take a knock. Can and it, it does affect like, you know, that they, they it, drive it, on goals and it soon goes from them. Yeah. You know, get one off, the, can, off his backside and suddenly he's away again. Can it yeah. take more courage to say, no, I don't want to take one, than to actually take one? I mean, they're turning I think, it around. I think, on it the can, I think it can do yeah. if, you're a, if you're a big ticket player like he is. Uh, look, we're going to carry on with this in five minutes. We've got a break coming up. John Newsom and Rob O'Neill. The mechanics of a penalty shootout. This guy's known what it's like. We'll talk more about that. Sheffield Wednesday. All the other sport in five. See you then.